All right, Dakota, my man, how you doing tonight? Doing good. I'm doing good. Man, if I seen correctly, man, on social media, it was uh, it was just your birthday. Was it yesterday, day four? When was it? It was yesterday, May 9, two thousand three. More life. Man, how'd it go? You have a good. You have a good day. Yes, sir. It, it was going great. You know, in the game, started out with a with a base knock double, drove in the run, tied the game. Then it got canceled. So. It was pretty good. <laughs> then it, and then it got canceled. It, it started good, then it, then it kind of took a turn. But yeah, yeah, all all good. You got to play, got to play the sport you love on your birthday at home, and and, and get get a knock in. So I feel you. Well, before we get into your story, man, we always like to break the ice, find out a few things, man. Right now, what is your favorite song? If you was to put on something to listen to, put it in the headset. What are you listening to? Uh, who? Right now. Uh, probably, probably I'm good by uh, BB Rexon. That's the go-to for me, for me and, and the boys. And the boys, that's what I'm talking about. All right, y'all all vibing to it. All right, favorite baseball movie ever? 42. I, I assume that to be the answer, but... <laughs> I don't know, man. You might, you might have said something like the Sandlot. I had the kid in you on the answer. All right. And so this next question, probably going to get to the answer I'm expecting, but who's your favorite athlete all time? Bo Jackson. <laughs> ah, Bo Jackson. different. Bo, no, Bo knows. Is that because you played uh, baseball and football, or is it just overall because of both? A little bit of both, a little bit of both. I feel you, I feel you. All right, well, let's get into your story, man. Speaking of playing different things, you know, where are you from, for those that don't know? I'm from Ken, Mississippi. Down, down there in the, the, the country, right? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, family dynamics, man. You know, you got siblings, you're the only child. What's up? I got a older brother and an older sister. I got my mom, two, two nieces, one nephew. All right, so you the youngest sibling, so you you the yep. you the golden child. Oh yeah, golden child. <laughs> I, I heard that. So, uh, at what age did you start uh start playing sports and specifically, you know, baseball? Uh, I started playing sports like I would say I was seven years old. Started out with baseball, and then football started rolling in around the same time. Those the only two you played, or did you kind of play a little bit of everything at some point? Uh, I played everything. <laughs> I played I played soccer. I ran track, basketball. I mean, if you put me out there on the swim team, I'll probably try that too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Well, I, I believe the track part. I seen you running, so I I, de I definitely believe in that. So you know, growing up, you playing all these sports. Obviously, we know. We're going to get into high school and stuff. We know which ones you're going to, you know, get into uh, and fo focal point on. But, you know, travel ball is such a big thing, man, especially, you know, around these parts. You know, obviously I live in Mississippi too, man. What travel ball team did you play for growing up? I started out with the Madison Lightning at the age of seven. And then that that whole age group, Stuck together, and we moved up. We changed our name to the, I think it was the, Age Black Athletic, Athletic Black or something like that. And then, when it all started to count, I grew up playing with Dylan's. Yeah. When it all. Yeah, went 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 to the big leagues in the in the travel ball association. I feel you. Yeah. All right, and so with that, uh, what uh, what high school did you go to? Started out at uh Cannon Academy from ninth to eleventh grade, and then I finished out at uh Jackson Academy. Yeah, so, no yeah. and I and that's where I wanted to go, man. Instead of traveling all through high school, man, uh, you know, I really went through the the Jackson Academy stats, and uh, I wanted to talk about that first. Let's let's start with football, man. Obviously, baseball is your thing, but gotta gotta respect what you did on the on the football field and. Myself as a football player and, and never a good baseball player. Kind of, I kind of want to talk about it a little bit, especially because I mean, you got wide receiver, running back, and uh, 
Got a, got a quarterback play in there, which we'll talk about. But, you know, you you had in your senior year 81 yards rushing with a touchdown, 877 yards receiving, 10 touchdowns. And then mm-hmm. quarterback, one for one, 73 yards and a touchdown. So let's talk, man, let's talk about the quarterback yeah. play first, man. Like, what was that like? All right. So we were uh semifinal game last year, two years ago, whenever I graduated. We were in the semifinal game against MRA, and we wrote up this play before we played them. And it was like a sort of like a jet sweep with a receiver going down the field, Hail Mary, and I just toss it up to him. And uh, it worked. <laughs> I, I let it. <laughs> did you literally toss it up, or did you, or did you drop one in the bread basket? Oh man, I let it loose. <laughs> I and heard that. that. It, and <laughs> can you can you, th- can you throw a football pretty well? Obviously, baseball and football are different throwing motions, but I mean, being that you got the arm you got, I assume you can throw a football pretty well. Yeah, I can. So that you was waiting. You've been waiting on that moment. I've been waiting on that moment <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So. Obviously, receiving, man, that, that was your deal, 877 yards, 10 touchdowns. And, you know, we talk about that speed that you got and everything, man. So, I, I mean, I assume uh, you was pretty hard to, uh, to block off the line. I mean, myself as a DB, you'd have been hard to jam up and, and hold up, I assume. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> I'm a little too I'm a little too old to be trying to stop you now, but I I tell you what because I can't catch you I'm gonna try I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to jam you up and make sure you go nowhere <laughs> if I have to I tackle you and get a penalty but all right getting into getting into baseball these these stats bro let me tell you <clears throat> your uh your teammate Hunter Hines came on here and I remember specifically the number just because he batted 497 and I mm-hmm. remember saying to him man so. Uh, you you was pretty happy with how you did in high school, and the man told us, "No, nah, he wanted five hundred, and and I was like, "Man, five hundred's asking a lot." And then here I was prepping for your episode, and you, sir, you batted five twenty four, sixteen home runs, fifty seven RBIs, fifty runs, and eleven stolen bases. So five hundred is undoubtedly unch- achievable, and you did it. And so, man. Mm-hmm. Talk to me before, and obviously you pitched too, and we'll get into that. But man, talk to me about the success. I mean. It doesn't matter who you're facing against, man. Um, batting over 500 is batting over 500. And putting up those kind of stats, just talk to me about your senior year of baseball and the success you had. Man, it was – it was like like everything I dreamed of, you know. Just playing with, like, all my friends I grew up playing with and being around everybody I, like, actually liked, you know. That, that just made it so much, so much fun to just play play the game you love and just go out there freely, not having to worry about anything, you know, just having fun playing baseball. Yeah, and, sure. you know, statewide in Mississippi, I mean, if you were to do a per capita, um, you know, because obviously Mississippi, when you talk about population, isn't, isn't the biggest. But if you broke it down, man, I've seen more studs come out of the state of Mississippi, and I've seen better high school baseball in the state of Mississippi than I've seen most of the country. Mississippi – we we just breed studs, man, and you're just another one of them. Yeah. So pitching, man, you know, 5.60 ERA, obviously probably higher than you wanted, but 3-0 and record with three saves and nine appearances. So, you know, obviously you're known for your hitting. Hat, you know, was pitching something that, that you like doing or you wanted to do, or is it something they just – that they needed you to do? Uh, It was it was something I, I wanted to do. They They actually didn't. That's why I only had like what like three innings, I think. Yeah. They they didn't want me to pitch because like they were just they were just looking out for me, which I understood. But you know me, I I, I wanted to get up there and <laughs> you know try to mow down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you you did good in, in the time that you got, and it all and it all worked out. So, you know, being that you played football, being that you played baseball, you know. I'm going to bring up another Mississippi State player because Landon Sims on his episode talked about being a football player made him a better baseball player for two reasons, um, athletically, and he said mentally, um, it's it kind of gave him that that electric charge, that that whole different, like, you know, game, game mentality. Would you agree with that, saying yeah. that football helps you as a baseball player? 
I totally agree. You know, some sometimes when I'm out there, I gotta remind myself that I'm on the baseball field because I get a little bit too too hype. You know, <laughs> just don't tackle. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a receiver, so you shouldn't be tackling nobody, right? But be all right. So, you know, perfect game had you ranked as the 17th best outfielder in the nation. You were second in the state of Mississippi. So, you know, um, obviously you changed schools and all that, but you are playing for Doolins. You know, at what point do colleges start reaching out to you? I know it had to be early. Uh, You know, I really didn't go through a recruiting process. You know, I, I knew I wanted to come here, you know. So when when Mississippi State – Go up, reached out to me. It was on site, you know. I, I knew. Yeah, no doubt. So, I mean, you say that as a kid. Did you grow up like a diehard Mississippi State fan? Or not. I wouldn't say diehard, but, you know, just growing up watching them and, you know, just – just what, you know, growing up watching Jake Mangum. You know, that was the era I grew up in around the Mississippi State time when I was a younger kid watching them play, you know. Yeah, no doubt. Our uh, our uh, other host, Randy, has joined us. Randy, my man, he his favorite athlete. You gonna love this answer, Bo Jackson. <laughs> my old Bo knows. <laughs> Bo knows. But Bo uh, knows. but uh, you know, going to Mississippi State. My first question for you, man. I always like to ask. You know, that first time you step out on the duty noble, man. We 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 know just. I mean. That stadium is unrivaled. You know, what's the emotions like as you step out there? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think I took a breath. Jeez. It was – when I walked out from – when we came back out from in and out putting our jerseys on and everything, I walked back out and it's packed. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> you know, I'm shocked. Yeah, no doubt. Like, I mean, just being the first time I went there as a baseball fan, I was just like, this place is different. And and this is like, you know, I went to Swayze first, and this isn't like trying to knock Ole Miss or anything, but you go from Swayze to the dude, and you're like, wow, dude. Like, I, I mean, it, it really feels like you upgrade to a big league park, right? Even, even as an LSU fan at Alex Box, it does, they just don't rival the way – um you know, Duty Noble does in Starville. Yeah. It's... So, Coda, let's, let's get into that, though, man. You you talk about not taking a breath, but on the season, 297, eight home runs, 33 RBIs, 22 runs, four stolen bases, SEC Freshman of the Week, April 17th. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the acclimation like for you, and what's going through your mind as you start having some success, obviously, at Duty Noble and even away from it? You know, I'm the more I'm out there, the more – you know, just experiencing it. I'm kind of getting used to the fans and the noise and all of that, you know. That's all I really needed was, you know, just a little bit of experience. A little bit of confidence. Like, so uh, they talk about the fans, man. Obviously, it's it's noted how great Duty Noble is with the fans, but what's been the most hostile environment, man? Uh, mm, I'm not even sure. Or what's been the loudest place you've been other than Duty Noble? Because it's loud. Are you just so locked in? You don't even pay attention to that. I really, I really don't pay attention to it. Dakota, but lucky I'm, I'm a respectful LSU fan, or he might feel me this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, LSU. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's different. I was down there for the Tennessee LSU series. That was my first time in the box. It's it's definitely different there. But let's talk about you, man. As of right now, the expectations you set for yourself, man. How are you feeling with your production? You know, right now I'm feeling great, you know. Right now I'm just I'm just trying to just stay mentally locked in and, you know, just staying consistent, you know. If you could just pick out one thing you got to improve on yourself, what do you think that one thing is? Mm. Right now, I would say still my defense. Well, not defense, just my first step. I understand. I understand. So, look, as far as, like, being a freshman, who have been some of those guys that have really helped you and kind of mentored you and gotten you acclimated at Mississippi State? Uh, My boy, my boy, uh, 
Cole Ledbetter, Nate Chester, Will Hoyle, you know, all the older guys, Kobe Holcomb. Yeah, absolutely. Some some star-studded names. So let's get into that Super Bulldog weekend. Obviously, it was electric. Jim was there, so he was all in our group text telling us just how electric it was. But before we talk about the outcome, what was it like playing in front of that combined? I got to read this number right. 43,986 people over that weekend. You ever been a part of anything close to that? No shot. Never. (laughs) Never. So then, obviously. Go ahead. That was crazy. That was, oh, my God. If I could do it over, I If I could do it over, I would for sure. Absolutely. Got them good vibes going. So look, obviously we now we know what it was like, you know, from for you to have been there in front of an NCAA record crowd of sixteen thousand four hundred and twenty-three. Lane told us you made it extremely hard to catch. You were the reason that y'all ended up going all the way to the right center wall. So what was going through anything going through your mind, or you just kind of blacked out? A lot of guys say they just kind of black out in a moment like that. <laughs> oh, I blacked out in like I saw my boy uh, Will Hoyle. He was just like, "Go to the, go to the lodge, go to the lodge," and I'm just like jumping, running to the lodge. <laughs> Were you nervous that ball wasn't gonna make it through the hole because it it just made it past Gonzo? Oh yeah. <laughs> when I when I saw it or when I saw his glove like miss it, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I was so locked in on the ball, like he barely missed. <laughs> Yeah, and he's he's pretty good too. Sometimes he makes some plays you don't think he's gonna make. Yeah, but you definitely you got a hold of that one. So listen, y'all take care of business that weekend. You win the old Miss series. So before I get into the next part, just obviously you coming in as a freshman that hadn't been as much of a part of that series. How much does it mean to beat Ole Miss, or is it just another series for you? No, that was that was that was personal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that was it too. Personal. So, you know? so, yeah, absolutely, man. Just talk about what that kind of that route because sometimes we've been on here before and I've gotten answers from guys on both sides, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Oh, no, nah, man, we play with those guys, we know those guys. That's eh, just another series. I don't believe that, Dakota. I don't believe it for a second. I, I think your answer is the truth. No, nah. if they say that, that's a lot. They just telling us what we want to hear on a podcast because look, we want we would rather get your answer. Yeah, that was. That, that game will always be personal, <laughs> or that's it. as it should. I, I think I think he's got something personal against South Carolina. Personally, Randy, when he hit a four hundred eighty-seven foot <laughs> bomb off the loft, bro. You know, it it did travel. The word is it still hasn't come down. Well, no, it had to come down because it hit, it hit the loft. But I, what word is he broke a broke a window or something? I mean, this damage was done. Damage was done. So listen, look, this is not all good news, right? You got a rough, a rough series against Arkansas this mm-hmm. past weekend, but Jim's going to be down in Baton Rouge for this, you know, LSU series, watching his Tigers against you guys. But look, a note though is actually was a year ago today, a team from Mississippi looked like they were dead. They really didn't have a shot to get in. Walked into Baton Rouge, sweeps LSU, much to the dismay of my co-host here. So we've seen this movie before, Dakota. What do y'all got to do, and what's the message that this season isn't over and the weekend can kind of be a chance to turn everything around? You know, we just got to take it game by game, slow everything down, not try to do too much, you know, not listen to the fans, not listen to the noise, you know. Absolutely. That's that's a lot tougher in today's world than it's probably ever been. You know, you're not sitting around reading the newspaper clippings. Now you got social media, you got Twitter, and, you know, Instagram, TikTok, and all this other stuff. So how how hard is it to drown out that noise? You know, it's it's very hard. In today's world, in our new generation, you know, like you said, it's social media, you know. The kids or the fans, they, they love it. They feed into it, you know. You just got to block it out. The good thing is, Randy, we know just from Twitter alone, man, Dakota is a fan favorite. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody bad-mouthing our boy. That's a fact. No, man. I mean, when you guys were playing against – I'm a Tennessee fan. You're playing against my boys. They actually called you like Little Bo in that series, and and I wasn't as familiar And as I watched you in that series. I mean, you, you kind of got off on that one too, but we won't get into all that. We passed all that. <laughs> but, listen, I want to talk about something. Man. It seems like obviously in that Tennessee series and the Ole Miss series in a lot of moments, you seem like a 
ultra competitive dude, as we would expect to see, who thrives on that best on best. How excited are you at the opportunity to go up against Paul Skeens this coming weekend? You know, I've been talking about this for a while. I just want to I just want to experience it, you know. I've never experienced anybody throwing 100 like he does. You know, I want to I'm ready. Yeah, no no doubt. I mean, some some guys, you know, they don't show that competitive fire that you want to see. The answer should be exactly like you're saying. I mean, you should be excited about this challenge and and not be fearful of it cuz you joined Mississippi State. You you came into the SEC knowing that you were going up against, you know, like he said, best on best. And so this is what it should be all about. And, you know, obviously I hope it doesn't happen. But if it does, man, if you take my boy Yard, man, man, salute because you're the kind of guy that I know can. Yeah. But, uh, man, be- best of luck to you guys this weekend. All, all jokes aside, like I said, I won't be there rooting against you, man. Stay – State runs second. Can't do it to my son. As a matter of fact, my son coached me before this episode. Dakota he told me I couldn't be mean to you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Our dad was going to pay, so I'm keeping it nice. Got the cowbells in the back, so we're good. But with that, man, we're going to play a game called This or That that we play with every guest. Uh, you down to play? Yeah, I'm good. I'm ready. All right, so I give you two options. You choose one or the other. You just can't say neither or both. You got to pick one of them. So the first one is – would you rather have a time machine or would you rather have the ability to teleport? Mm. Teleport. You could teleport just right now. You're in your room. You vacate this podcast and teleport somewhere. Where you, where you want to go? Probably bore, bore. <laughs> hey, not, he not went bad. specific. I like it. A lot of people will say like an island. They don't get specific. That man yeah. said, I know exactly where I want to go. All right, this one will be interesting, especially, you know, Bo Jackson being his dude, Randy. Uh, Would you rather be the strongest and fastest man alive or have the ability to fly? Strongest and fastest. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Randy, you like how I added, look, so it used to be either strongest or fastest, and everybody always said fly. So I wanted to see what would happen. You're the first guest that got them both together. (laughs) <laughs> and he just that. Randy, does that change the equation for you? Or are you still flying? I think you waited the answer though. I think you waited. You get now you give them two options. I mean, the Strongest ability to fly is still is. I mean, but I mean it's going up against the ability to fly. You know what I'm saying? I'm still taking flight. I want to I want to fly. <laughs> and I bet I can fly fast. <laughs> All right. So this next one, man, it's tough for a lot for a lot of guys. I like them both. Do you like the white uniforms better or the new Sunday blacks? Oh, and you look good in them icy whites, so I know it's tough. Oh, that's a tough one. Can I can I ask them? Yeah, go for but, it. Which one do you like the Sunday blacks or the all whites better? We've never had a phone a friend. Cold went better, loaded oh, Sunday black. Sunday black. Same. So so is Cole is Cole your roommate? Yeah. Cole let's, call, let, let's, let, let's let's call them out right now. Who's the dirtiest roommate? <laughs> oh Slate Alfred, man. <laughs> <laughs> Clean it up, Slate. Gotta be better. All right. So it's funny that you're with your friends because this next question would you rather be trapped in a romantic comedy with people you don't like? Or be trapped in a horror movie with your friends. <laughs> trapped in a horror movie with my friends. Man, Nate everybody... Chester. Oh my god. <laughs> everybody keeps Same saying man. that, but do y'all watch <laughs> horror movies? I don't want to be in them. I'm just have to deal with people I hate. I ain't trying to be in none of these horror movies. Mm-mm. All <laughs> right, next one, man. If you can go to any concert, and I'm saying any concert, you can go see any musician anywhere, or you can go to any sporting event, no matter what it is. Are you going to the concert or are you going to the sporting event? Uh, I'll probably say concert to, since I play sports already. Yeah. All right. Who are you going to see and where? Drake. Anywhere. 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 The sixth guy. Yeah. 
No doubt. All right. So this next one, I'm gonna put it on you right here. This is Ooh, this this, this is one I couldn't wait for. Yeah. Who hits better bombs? You or Hunter Hines? Me. Hunter Hines. <laughs> that man did not mm. hesitate. I oof, Dakota. Look, that's look. a that's a tough one. Look. So in practice, I'll I'll ask him like every day, you want to have a home run derby? He's like, nah. You know he's scared. He's scared of him. You don't like. <laughs> man, you don't think it's like, nah, bro. You ain't. You ain't on that level yet. You don't think it's like that, do you? Nah, nah. He, he <laughs> no, no juice. Nah. Randy, Randy, right now you you need to be giving Hunter his his love because he came on here and Ooh. his question was, would he go twenty five or more home runs? And he said, no problem. And and Randy doubted him. And right now, what's he? He's on 21, 22. Is Randy, it's looking like it's going to happen, bro. I think that he hit like 11 of them against Tennessee. It <laughs> felt like every other at bat. I was like, I even texted Jim. I'm like, stop pitching to Hunter Hines. My God. <laughs> but, if it, you know, if you duck Hunter, then you got to get Dakota. That's your problem, bro, because that's actually how the Ole Miss walk-off <laughs> happened. They, they, they put Hunter on first, and then Dakota made him pay. That's how that's, that's how it happens. And he did he did some of that in the Tennessee series too. But I, I just don't pitch either one of them. Walk the bases loaded. Walk a run in. It's better than two, it, three it's, shots. It's, it's funny, Dakota, because y'all got LSU coming up, right? And so uh I'm at the LSU Arkansas series and they walk Dylan Cruz to load the bases for Tommy White. And Randy texts me, he goes, Absolutely mm. the right move. And then Tommy White hits a grand slam and he goes, It's still the right move. And so then Hell that's yeah. that's now happened. Four times this year, no joke, Dakota. That's happened four times this year where De- where Dylan Cruz has walked and and Tommy White hit a grand slam. So Randy's new theory, since he just told you walk both of y'all, that's actually his theory on LSU. He's like, just walk them both, just walk them both. Let's just get there. Let's see what. Let's look. It's like in basketball. I'm not gonna let Steph Curry or Clay Thompson beat me. I'm gonna make somebody else like Jordan Poole shooting 35 yeah. footer. Somebody else is beating me. It ain't gonna be the dudes like Dakota or Hunter. It's going to have to be somebody else. All due respect to everybody in the lineup, but I got to make somebody else beat me. No doubt. So, speaking of these home runs and that walk-off, Dakota, what was better for you, the 487-foot bomb or the walk-off? The walk-off, for sure. It it feels like that's the easy answer, but I watched that clip like three times before this episode because I had to record it and put put it on the intro. And every time I watch that thing, I mean, dude, you hit that ball so damn hard. I, I actually need to look up the exit <laughs> velo on that thing because it left in such a hurry. But uh, yeah. yeah, a walk off in front of sixteen thousand eight hundred twenty three people. Yeah, that'll probably do it. Yeah. Did you did you end up a uh, in that moment? Did you end up getting a? Uh, <laughs> I see Kate Smith right after. And uh, and then he had to go take a shower. He said he got beer and coke and everything else dumped on him. You get you get a bunch of stuff dumped on you. My pants were like heavy; they were sagging <laughs> from beer, water, and everything. <laughs> go up into the lounge. You never know what you might get. All right, so this next one, I'm gonna preface it by saying neither of them is a good scenario, but it's about which one you want to take on. Would you rather be attacked by a grizzly bear or by a tiger? Mm. Probably, mm. <laughs> probably a grizzly bear. I could probably fight him, you know. <laughs> Finally, Randy, I've been looking for somebody who wants to uh, fight him. See, uh, I'm all my. You know what? He just went up my charts big time. Everybody talking you know, about running. He's the first person that I, I might believe, though. First person. We've we've had people say the bear, but they say they'll play dead, they'll run, they'll climb a tree, whatever. You the first one that said you gonna fight them. I I'm I dig it. I'll probably fight them. All right. Well, we 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 actually we waited for somebody to answer a question like this to cut it. We got a friend with a grizzly bear as a pet. We'll see you this weekend. I'm bringing them to Baton Rouge. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we do have a pet tiger down there. If you want that challenge. <laughs> Oh, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So last one, man. Uh, would you rather betray your best friend? And when we say betray, that means no coming back. You ain't friends no more. Or would you <clears> rather <throat> do five years hard time in prison for a crime you did not commit? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. 
And you got your boys in the room too. Woo. I got I luckily, he, 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 he mentioned his best friend earlier, his name, and it wasn't one of them. So he's all right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, snit, I'm, I'm, snit, to, I'm snitching, bro. I'm a, I'm a, nah, I'm going to have to do the time, you know? Oh, uh, see, you young cats just don't know. Me and Randy been friends for 27 <laughs> years. Ain't neither of us going to jail for five minutes for each other. Nah, bro, I'm going to say deuces, <laughs> homie. <laughs> but it's all good. Hey, try try to stay loyal for as long as you can. But when you get older, you're gonna find you're gonna find out. But uh, <laughs> with that, man, you off the hot seat. You know, you got anything you want to plug or promote? I don't I don't know, man. You got you got any shirts or apparel? I, I you got a poster? What you got? You got anything? Not yet, not yet, not yet. It's coming, it's coming. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you what I always have for state guys. By the time this is done, I'm gonna make sure you get a, a bell, a poster, and everything else in between because we take care of our guests. So so be on the lookout, everybody. Get your get your Dakota Jordan official swag. But uh if you want to see what he's up to, man, on a on a maybe a, a Wednesday night talking to us guys, you know, Tuesday night is his birthday playing ball. You can check him out on Instagram at Coda4 underscore or Hell State BB to follow the Mississippi State baseball team. They'll be traveling to Baton Rouge this weekend to take on my LSU Tigers. Like I said, all jokes aside, wish you nothing but the best of luck. And if there's anything we can do for you, man, just reach out to us. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, absolutely. That's Dakota Jordan, everyone. We're going to take a break, plug some sponsors, and then we're going to discuss this upcoming weekend of SEC and NCAA baseball. <laughs> 